our equity market specifically, too sanguine on the Ukraine risk. The stock 600, the S&P now higher than where they were when Russia invaded Ukraine. Let's bring into the conversation David Lebovitz, JP Morgan Asset Management, Global Market Strategist. David, what do you think? So, you know, it's it's the question that, that we're discussing with clients in the current environment. What I would say is to us, whenever there's a geopolitical issue, we always try to identify the primary transmission mechanism to the economy. And, and as you said in the prior segment, obviously in this environment, uh, that transmission mechanism is, is higher energy prices. It, it's not, though, just about how high energy prices go, but more so how long they stay there. And I think, you know, a big part of the volatility that we saw over the past couple of weeks was really driven by what was happening in the energy complex, you know, as investors have realized that oil is going to continue to flow. And in the case of the United States, we're actually in a fairly solid position to weather this shock, uh, both in terms of our ability to generate more oil supply in our own backyard, but also given the consumer financial position and their their ability to absorb this shock, you know, it feels like people are recognizing that this is more of a bump in the road uh, as opposed to a pothole, again, assuming that energy prices uh, continue to move lower as opposed to moving back to the higher end of their recent range. David, notably, the tech sector has started to show some signs of life in recent days after really leading the downdraft in the S&P 500 anyway so far this year. Give us your sense of sector strategy right now. Is it time to migrate back to growth yet, or should we be sticking with the value trade? So for, for us, we think that, you know, growthy assets, particularly profitable growth, uh, is a great way to build a kind of core and, and defensive allocation within a broader equity portfolio. I think, you know, taking a step back when, when we look at what markets have done this year, by my lights, you know, what's happening in Eastern Europe, as terrible as it is from a humanitarian and a social perspective, still very much noise for the market, whereas on the other hand, the Fed has sent a very clear signal uh, and obviously got yep. going with rate hikes uh, in the middle of this week. I, I think that you you saw the baby get thrown out with the bathwater as it pertains to tech. And, and again, some of those mega cap names, those more profitable names that, to your point earlier, have done a lot of the heavy lifting uh, as the S&P tries to climb itself out, out of this hole. You know, we do think that there is value there, but we don't want to completely run to that side of the boat. You know, we like the idea of owning profitable tech. We also like the idea of owning things like industrials, materials, and financials, given our expectation for higher interest rates and a more robust nominal growth uh, environment this year. Curve starting to invert. Um, we've certainly seen that within the last hour. Fives uh, and threes. You got Chris Waller talking about the, the necessity maybe for a series of 50 basis point hikes. That strikes me as being beyond where the market is currently priced. If that was to come to bear, if we were to see those kind of more aggressive moves, maybe they're front loading, but aggressive moves nevertheless from the Fed, David, how does that change your thinking? So for, for us, you know, it's important to take a step back and recognize that the risk of recession in 2023 has risen relative to where it stood uh, at the beginning of this year. It's, it's certainly not our base case view, but when we think about the risks that exist on the horizon, uh, a Fed policy error is, is really front and center. You know, I think it, it makes sense for the Fed to have gotten going here in March. We do expect sequential hikes uh, in May and June. The idea of shocking the system with a 50 basis point hike, um, to me, is somewhat inappropriate. I think it's important to recognize that a lot of the inflation we're seeing in the current environment is, is a function of the supply side of the economy. Higher interest rates really only impact demand. And so, you know, a 50 basis point hike isn't going to unclog the supply chains. It's not going to deal with, with some of these issues that have been driving the inflation that we've seen over the past 18 months. And so to me, that the Fed would be better off sticking with 25 basis points and potentially trading some rate hikes later on this year uh, for an accelerated reduction in their balance sheet in an effort to keep that curve upward sloping and, and prevent uh, the inversion signal from really undermining investor risk appetite. 